this idea in the church that sin is what's keeping people away from God when the truth is sin was dealt with a couple thousand years ago. It's no longer an issue between us and God anymore. And yet much of Christianity somehow believes that God is still angry about our sin today. On the extreme end of this twisted thinking, we get people waving protest signs at funerals claiming that God is still mad at certain people because of what they do. Something tells me those sign waivers are in for a surprise when they step into eternity. I'm just saying. No doubt, there are several passages in the Old Testament that say that God hates those who do evil. There's several in the Psalms. Although, to be fair, most of the time, even in the Old Testament, the Bible says that God hates the sinful acts and not the person doing them. There is a penalty attached to sin as well, and it's pretty steep. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. When we do stuff that we know is wrong and it pulls at our conscience, that's sin. And those wrong actions come with consequences. Sometimes the consequences of sin might even seem to be desirable at first. For example, you can get high from drugs or alcohol and that might feel pretty good. But several years as a chronic user or addict and you'll end up with all sorts of bad things weaving into your whole life. It'll affect your health, your relationships, your finances. That's death moving in on you. The same can be said for almost any sin out there. The short-term benefits tend to get far outweighed by the long-term costs. However, even though the costs are very real, those sins are not separating anyone from God today. Take a look at the second half of that verse we just read. You see that big old but? It changes everything. Sure, the wages of sin is death. But, but God offers everyone a free gift that deals with sin. It's free for the taking and available to anyone who will accept the gift. Problem solved. The thing is, it's even bigger than that. The sin problem has been dealt with permanently and for everyone, not just those who accept the gift either. John tells us this. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. John is talking about Jesus there and says that Jesus paid the price required for everyone, not just those who received him. Sin no longer stands between humanity and God. It's been dealt with, done, over, problem solved, absolutely and finally. When Jesus said, it is finished, moments before he died on the cross a couple thousand years ago, he meant it is finished. Sure, sin still exists and still has consequences, but it is not an issue between us and God anymore. Then, does that mean that everyone goes to heaven as some think? Nope. Here's why. A gift has to be given by someone and it also has to be received by someone. God has already given the gift. That part's a done deal. However, each of us has the option whether or not to choose to receive that gift. And if we choose not to receive the gift, then we don't get to enjoy its benefits. It's that simple. Refuse the gift and nothing changes. You stay separated from God. Your sin will eventually kill you and you'll get to spend eternity the way you chose, separated from God in hell. Accept the gift and everything changes for you. Think about it this way. Let's say I'm a homeless man living under a highway bridge somewhere and this insanely wealthy guy comes and finds me and says he wants to give me something. He's bought a huge, multi-million dollar mansion and put it in my name. He tells me that he's covered all the expenses for that mansion, all the expenses. He's covered them forever. I'll never have to worry about taxes for insurance, maintenance, staffing, groceries, cars, drivers, anything forever. Oh, and he says that I'll get an unlimited credit card along with it. I just swipe whatever I want to buy and I'll never even see the bill. 
If I decide I want to buy my own space shuttle, it's paid for. Everything is set up. All I have to do is accept the keys that he's holding out to me and move into my new life. After he does all that for me, let's say I tell him, no thanks, I'd rather keep living under this bridge. Can the wealthy man force me to accept his gift? If he tries to, then it's not really a gift, is it? It makes no sense that I'd rather live under a bridge than in an all-expense-paid mansion. Maybe I like the bridge life. Maybe mansions seem evil to me. Maybe I knew someone who lived in a mansion once and he was a real jerk and I think that if I move into a mansion, I'll end up being just like him. Regardless, at the end of the day, it's still my choice. And that is a small picture of what God did for us through Jesus and his sacrifice. Refusing that gift is what separates us from God. Our sin is no longer a factor.